there's a physical shortage in the market because it's needed in the industry, things can happen very fast. And expect or imagine yourself what will happen when the Reddit crowd and the Wall Street Silver crowd understands, well, the Wall Street Silver movement came from, from the fact that they understood that this is a market you can corner. They tried it and they failed at, at, in the first time. But imagine when hedge funds and retail investors understand it's finally happening. Uh, silver is about to break 30, 31 dollars. Then it will move to 40 quite fast. Then expect the move to 50. That's a triple top. Then it will, <laughs> it will take a pause. But once it crosses 50, Everybody in the world wants to get ahead on silver. The silver market is experiencing a surge in interest and price, with experts predicting the potential for significant upward movement. Willem Middlecoop, founder of the Commodity Discovery Fund, suggests that silver's relatively small market size compared to gold makes it particularly susceptible to dramatic price swings if large investors enter the arena. Silver has broken above the key $30 level, with any short-term dips seen as buying opportunities. FX Street's technical analysis confirms the upward trend as silver clears a descending channel. This breakout suggests further gains, with buyers targeting $30.84, the recent cycle high from June 21st. Middlecoop's projections are even more bullish, suggesting that silver could rapidly move from its current $30 to $31 range to $40. He believes breaking the $50 mark could trigger widespread demand, potentially leading to even more dramatic price action. The silver market is gaining strength as the U.S. dollar weakens. This shift follows Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's remarks at the European Central Bank Forum, where he suggested the U.S. economy is returning to a disinflationary trend. These conditions typically create a favorable environment for precious metals like silver. A growing supply-demand imbalance underpins the bullish outlook for silver. Middlecoop points to an expected deficit of 200 to 300 million ounces per year, largely driven by increased industrial demand particularly in the solar panel sector. Silver outperformed other assets in the second quarter, driven by supply deficits and increasing demand. Deutsche Bank reported a 16.7% total return for silver, compared to 9.6% for copper, marking the strongest quarterly performance for both metals in 18 months. Join us as we delve into Willem Middlecoop's insights. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you. Silver is an accident waiting to happen. I've been talking about this for a long time. But now look at the deficits developing in the physical market. And you can play all these paper future games on the COMEX and LBMA or whatever if you can't supply the physical metal. And now silver is being used in the solar panels in a, in, in, in a big, big way. The silver deficit the physical deficit in the silver market is expected to be two three hundred million ounces per year and 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 if if investors start to flee towards silver because it's also also a monetary metal i i've i've built a billion web shop myself in 2008 um i, I know the silver market quite quite well this is a very, very explosive situation. So everybody's always talking about gold. I'm much more interested in what will happen to silver. It will happen first with silver, and then it will happen with gold. It's about the small size of the silver market. As I explained, world silver production is less than 30 million. Mm -hmm. it, that's a fraction of the gold market, it's a fraction of the gold market. So a few billionaires can 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 really corner the silver market now. Um, and silver is being used as a commodity, is being used in the industry. 60, 70% of all silver being produced is used now in the industry. That's that's not a fact with gold, you know, most gold is, is moving from, from, from underground to, 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 a, to a vault somewhere, is not being used. And gold is so expensive that it's always recycled while we lose a lot of silver. We lose a lot of silver. And there's another important fact. Central banks, uh, the vaults are full of gold. They don't have any silver. They don't have any silver. The only silver left is with the ETFs, which, um, of course, is being used and financial tricks are being played. 
But once you get a shortage in the physical market, and look what happened to Palladium, Tom. Mm -hmm. We saw the same in Palladium. There was a very huge open interest in Palladium around 2015 and 2016, just like silver, platinum, and gold. Huge open interest, many paper shorts. And then the market needed more Palladium because of the start of the success of the hybrid cars. And you needed for the exhaust systems, you needed Palladium. So there was a lot of extra demand in the physical market. There was a shortage of Palladium, and then prices jumped 4x between 2017 and 2019. And the open interest in Palladium futures, I have these slides, I can send it to you, came down by 80%. And that shows when there's a physical shortage in the market because it's needed in the industry, things can happen very fast. When the Reddit crowd and, and the Wall Street silver crowd understands, well, the Wall Street silver movement came from, from the fact that they understood that this is a market you can corner. They tried it and they failed at, 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 in the first time. But imagine when hedge funds and retail investors understand it's finally happening. Uh, silver is about to break 30, $31. Then it will move to 40 quite fast. Then expect the move to 50. That's a triple top. Then it will it will take a pause. But once it crosses 50, everybody in the world wants to get ahead on silver. The global movement towards de-dollarization is gaining traction, with BRICS nations and their allies taking significant steps to reduce dependence on the U.S. dollar. In a bold move, Zambia has become the latest country to join this trend, reportedly planning to implement laws that penalize citizens for using the U.S. dollar within its borders. Willem Middlecoop believes the U.S. dollar will face challenges, but won't collapse completely. He compares it to the British pound, which remains relevant post-empire. Meanwhile, according to Middlecoop, China's renminbi is increasingly significant in international trade, particularly among BRICS nations. This trend is supported by data from Goldman Sachs, which indicates that foreigners' growing willingness to trade RMB-denominated assets contributes to de-dollarization in favor of China's currency. The shift towards alternative currencies is not limited to the BRICS bloc. Early last year, Brazil and Argentina announced plans to allow trade settlements in RMB, signaling a broader acceptance of China's currency in international transactions. Let's get back to the interview. I, I, I stepped away from the idea that the SDR might be the successor for the dollar. It, 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 it could be, could still be, but more important now, and that's the thesis of the, well, the new edition of the Big Reset, that you'll have a well bifurcation also in the uh, in the world reserve currency market. You'll have the dollar, which will be the main world reserve currency um, still. But then you have this BRICS alliance who will start working on their own financial system, who might even work on their own reserve currency. Or the renminbi might become the currency of choice for the BRICS countries when they start trading with, with each other. China is doing more international trade in its own currency now than in the US dollar. Um, you see the BRICS countries uh, adding a lot to their gold reserves, so it would be quite easy for them to have a currency linked to gold, connected to gold, and that could be very harmful for the West. So actually, it's a waiting game. Who will play the gold card first? The U.S. might feel tempted uh, because they have this 8,000 tons of gold in Fort Knox. Apparently, they have it. You know, nobody can prove it's not there. Um, so ex I would be surprised when the U.S. Um, will return to some form of gold standard, as you might be aware. Some people have um, suggested this already. Um, so I'm, I'm not in the camp anymore that the dollar will collapse. <laughs> the dollar will stay around. The British pound is still around. The British Empire, I haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, that's, that hasn't been gone, but the British, British pound is still there. Mm -hmm. I think the same will happen with the U.S. dollar, even if the U.S. will leave its position as world's hegemon. The, the dollar will still be there. But the U.S. might see the need 
to um well to play the gold card or they might for the for the for the first part of this well the first decade um they might to like a, a higher um inflation and a depreciation of the US dollar because that will help them to um well to cope with their huge uh huge debts uh, so but I, so it, it answer in short i don't expect one currency to take over all mm -hmm. and 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 of course the us might um like to use the sdr and to and the help of the imf at a certain point but nobody's talking as the r anymore we in the west are in decline the trend is going down in the east the trend is going up they're getting stronger we are getting weaker and while we get weaker especially in europe because in europe we are also collateral damage in the fight between the us and china and the more they start fighting each other, we will be more collateral damage. I'm I'm very afraid. A lot of people here in Europe are very afraid for that because the US always made us here in Europe to follow them, you know, 100 percent because we are allies and they liberated us 80 years ago. And, and that's, that's that's also an interesting fact. Eh? We were liberated in 1944, 1945. At 80 years is 2024, 2025. Mm -hmm. So from a fourth turning perspective, you have, you, you're, I think you're aware of the book by Neil Howe, the fourth turning, you have all these large changes coming every 80 years. Mm -hmm. And, and that it's it just, if you listen to Neil Howe, he predicts there will be a lot of um, conflicts and wars until 27, 28, and then from from a fourth turning perspective from an 80 year cycle perspective things might start to quiet down a bit furthermore as BRICS nations and their allies push for alternatives to the u.s dollar and with the potential for a return to some form of gold standard how might this reshape the global financial landscape share your perspective in the comment section if the video resonates with you join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon Thank you for being a part of our community.